This is not a Mickey Mouse program. This is Dick Riculous. D- What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs and yes, we're going to test another mini amp. Make sure you check the video description for some of the other amps I've tested recently. Today we're going to look at an amplifier brand I've never heard of before called Corsus. This is the Z500 or Z500 depending on what part of the world you're from. It is a three channel model rated at 2 by 125 watts plus 1 by 250 watts at 2 ohms does have a crossover for the sub channel as well. Pick this up off of eBay, 140 bucks. Check video description if you'd like to pick one up or see some of the other amps that I recommend. All right, so here's the amp. You can see the box and it's got the ratings here. Everything is in Portuguese, which we can translate kind of easily to English. Two by 125 watts plus one by 250. Yeah, that's it. It comes with the amp. It comes with a sticker looks like Terminator 2 and it comes with uh, some kind of a sheet uh, with some Portuguese writing on it no manual no nothing like that here's the amp it's a different looking design has a subwoofer gain actually on the top of the amp but there is no gain for the other channels you can see there's also a 20 amp fuse a 12 volt connection remote terminal ground terminal those are all 12 gauge we smack it up, flip it, rub it down, I mean turn it around. On the other side you have the speaker terminals. These are like 16 gauge, has a sub and then the right left and also RCA inputs for your low level inputs from your head unit. And on the bottom there's a sticker which is very convenient. It tells you how everything works. I like it when they do this. Maybe that's their manual. It's just on the bottom. That way you don't have to waste any more paper. This thing is plastic though. Feels very cheesy. It's not easy being cheesy. As far as dimensions, 7.3 inches long by 3.7 inches wide. Millimeter equivalence there as well. And then 1.7 inches on the depth. So we got the amp all wired up using 12 gauge for the power and ground. And for the speaker terminals, we use 16 gauge. And we got the RCAs from the head unit. Now, before we get too far into the test, let's talk about some big dummy math 101. So easy, your mama could do it. 20 amps times 14.4 volts is 288 watts. We're going to say it's around 90% efficient. If we're lucky, that's 259 watts. So my friends, there's no way we're getting 500 watts. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and power the amp up. Turn on the good old amp dyno. Get the amp connected up. and let's try it out and see what we get. What are these real numbers going to be? You know Dick Rickles has already joined us, so we don't expect a whole lot. First off, let's try 4 ohms. There's no ratings provided here for the amp, but we're going to show you what we get. Certified, first up, up to 1% THC. This is the stereo channels I'm showing here. Yeah, right around 20 watts at 14.48 volts. And we also had the AMM1 on the sub-channel, and we got 71 watts at 3.9 ohms there. Now let's try the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. And again, we're using 40 hertz tests on all these, so it loads all the channels because the sub-channel is crossed over. 26 watts per channel, 14.4. On the sub-channel, we got 70 watts, 3.9 ohms on the resistor. Now let's try dynamic burst, 40 hertz. Send a pulse tone into the amp. Not much more power. 27 and 25 watts, 14.44. And then the sub channel right about the same again, 68 watts at 3.9 ohms. As far as efficiency goes, we measured around 70%, but due to the clamp meter, and since it's such a small number, we just estimated between 70 and 75%. Now let's try two ohms, rated two by 125 plus one by 250. So we have the stereo channel on channel one, and we have the sub channel on channel two, and yep. I can never understand that. Yeah, we can't understand why they got to play these games. Just give us the true numbers. Well, that's what I'm here for, testing for you. 
uncertified again we're still less than half of what the rated power is for the amp can you believe this this is not a mickey mouse program tell them about it that's what we need to do stand up don't let these numbers fool us dynamic 45 106 you know who's up next <laughs> got he <laughs> got he <laughs> Yes, yeah, funny, but it's kind of not funny. <laughs> Efficiency, again, around 70 to 75 percent is what we were able to determine based on the clamp meter that we use. And wow, as far as temperature goes, the top definitely got pretty warm 135 degrees, 136 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty warm after the test. You can pause this if you'd like to read all the different results that I got because I did a lot of different tests. And uh, yeah, it was just pretty abysmal as far as the numbers go. So not happy with that at all. But now let's hook it up to some speakers and see how it sounds. Then we'll take it apart. Alright, so as you can tell, with speakers, it's actually sounded pretty good. I was impressed with the sound quality. Now, let's take the amp apart. There's just one screw here where the RCAs are, and then you have to peel the sticker back on the bottom. And there's one more screw on the bottom that holds the case on. Then we can take the insides of the amp out. And here you can see the two different parts, the circuit board and the heat sink. So we'll have to take some more screws off. There's actually five additional screws here to remove the heat sink. So we'll go ahead and do that next, take that off. And then you can see the three different parts of the amplifier, the case, the heat sink, and also the amplifier board. And this whole thing is aluminum. You can see, so it dissipates the heat pretty well. And yeah, and here's the inside of the amp. You can see some filter caps. You can see a transformer there and some chips on the board. They're not chips ahoy. They are TPA 3116D2s. And yes, these are Class D audio chips. You may have seen these before on my channel. 2 by 50 watts at 4 ohms or 100 watts 2 ohms mono. That's right, 100 watts 2 ohms mono. These were actually in the $10 subwoofer amplifier that I tested three years ago. You can buy that subwoofer amp for 10 bucks with these chips and it just has one. Let's talk about the good stuff. It does have three channels, all insert terminals. It does have a gain for the subwoofer channel, which is nice. Has a unique look. I don't know, I guess you could say that. And I did like the sound. The TPA3116 chips do sound good. What could be better? Well, obviously the absurd ratings. There's no gain on the stereo channels. It's rated like a boss. No high pass crossover on the stereo channels. Who rated this? And the case feels cheap. All right guys, there you have my test on the Corsa's Z or Z500 RCA model. 
Again, make sure you check the video description for links to other mini amps I've tested. This is definitely not the best one I've tested, but it does sound good. I just do not like the way they overrated the amplifier. So understand you're going to get about 40 watts per channel on the stereo load, and you're getting about 80 watts on the subwoofer channel. So thanks as always for watching. Appreciate you supporting my channel. This is Big D. Until next time, I'm out of here. All right, we have the cords hooked up, just the sub channel. We're gonna try it one ohm dynamic burst. See what we get, 40 Hertz. Shuts off. Shuts off. This is where the trap is.